Uh, before, before we begin, I'd just like to say thank you to all of you for, um, for coming today and I hope that you can walk away with some new thoughts and some, some new direction. Um, so you've already heard a little bit about who I am and what I do. So one of the things that I um, really appreciate doing in my, in my business is having one-on-one -on -one coaching conversations. I also do leadership training and so you can see my uh, my banner is over here with my face. I just got these. <laughs> I just got these yesterday, and I'm like, wow, my face was not that big on the computer screen, <laughs> and there I am. So anyway, it's a little humbling. So, um, but it, that just explains a little bit about uh, my business. And I'm new to Red Deer, so if you've never seen me on. Uh, Heard of my business? That's because I am new to Red Deer. Moved uh, from Hinton, Alberta, and uh, really, really enjoying Central Alberta. So, when you decided to come to this workshop-based talk, I'm guessing that you went, "Hmm, leadership in today's workforce." <sighs> That's a bit of a loaded topic, isn't it? You know, um, when when I talk to some friends of mine about what uh, that might look like and sound like, it could sound a lot like a lot of complaining. <laughs> right? Yes? Yes? Okay, because today's workforce is challenging. There are definitely some challenges. But today's, today's talk is going to focus on the one thing that we can control. And that's us. You and me, we have, we have the opportunity to lead in a way that we, we can do and change the way that we show up and so that's what I'm hoping to, uh, to do. I'm not here to, to uh, have you list all of the things that are hard and wrong and, and that sort of thing. So uh, that's the direction of our conversation today. So, leadership. What is leadership? The best definition of leadership that I've ever heard is one word, and that's influence. And so there are people who can lead from a secretary's desk. I'm sure you've seen them before. And there are people who can lead from the CEO office. However, there are people who cannot lead from the CEO office as well. And so um, influence is is a powerful is a powerful word and so we're I'm we're going to be exploring that a little bit today so um there are some stickies on your table and if you have pens you should each have a worksheet in front of you that has kind of a smudgy version of my business <laughs> logo um if you could if you if you want you can fill those fill those in as we go so leadership is influence, and um, so you, uh, if you could just write down on your sticky, on a, on a sticky, what, how do we create influence in today's workplace? What are some ideas that you might have to create influence? And then I'm just going to invite you to do something completely different. And um, maybe just share that with one or two people at your table, and then bring your sticky up here. And I'm just going to get you to put it on the podium. How do we create influence? Okay, so let's put the bring the stickies on up, and then we'll have a listen to what what your thoughts are. Because I have my thoughts, but your thoughts are as relevant as mine. So come on up, don't be scared. Great, we'll just put them on here. Thank you. Ah, there was a table that was sinking. Three, three stickies. 
Ah. Okay. A few more. Okay. Okay, so I could focus on ways that we do not want to create influence. And I think you could, maybe we could just populate that first before I talk about how we do want to create influence. What are some things that we do not want to do? There's some smiles out there. Go for it. Shut it out. Yeah. Sorry? Negativity and complaining. Negativity complaining. Beautiful. Well, how else do we not want to leave? By bad example. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Yep. Bad example. Do you wanna do you wanna elaborate on that? What would a bad example? Can you can you So if I say jump and do this, and then the next time I'm told to jump and do this, because eh, I'm the boss and I don't have to. Beautiful. That's, that's not true. Yeah, we wanna be the change that we that we want, right? Okay. So negativity, not being who we are expecting our employees to be. Anything else that we do not want to be? Yep. Micromanaging. Micromanaging. Right. Giving, empowering rather than, but, okay. Anything else? What, what are some pitfalls that we maybe encounter as leaders? We, have, as, as leaders, we can create influence with all of those things. But instead, what you've, what you've populated here is that to be, uh, to motivate, to be approachable, having a personality uh, with a great attitude, inspir inspiring, positive, walking the walk, do what you say, walk the walk. Um, yeah, so some, some really great stuff. And so the things that don't work, we've already talked about that. And what works? Those those things that we've just talked about, very very important. So, what works um, is different than what <laughs> is not does not work. One of the things that I've uh, as I've read a little bit about leadership, as I've read a lot about leadership, is that in previous years, command and control were sort of that was that was the way the businesses were created it was command control and what we're trying to do what research has shown again and again is that command control is not effective and so what we need to do is move to a paradigm that is not command control and so um, Simon Sinek uh, talks a lot about you know, moving away from that command control. Peter Senge, Stephen Covey, Brene Brown, they all talk about different types of ways of leading yourself. Leading yourself. This is what, this is where leadership gets really, like, powerful because it's not just doing something, it's being something. I have a daughter who's 15, she learned how to play the piano she started when she was three, and she does a beautiful job playing piano. And her fingers, her muscle memory, all of that is really, really powerful. And leadership is like that. It's not just something that you can do, it's something that you need to be. And so, we're gonna try, we're gonna try something. We're gonna try something. Okay. All right, so what are some things that you see as being important to do in your workplace as a leader? Go ahead. Develop other leaders. Develop other leaders, okay. So let's just, on, on your paper that you have in front of you, there's do, have, and be. Do, have and be. So if I develop other leaders, what do I, so that's my do. Have, then I will have leaders. And then what does that mean about who I am? Then I will be successful, okay? All right, so let's, let's just explore that a little bit. Let, we can take it from the leadership model to something specific. Um, I will, plan a holiday, and I will have a break, 
and I will be relaxed. Does that all make sense? Okay, so maybe like if, if that makes sense, why don't you write down some of your own do have be examples. Any, any ideas off the floor right off the bat? I will learn leadership skills. Well, I will, I will focus on leadership skills, so I will have some <coughs> new thinking, and then I will have a bit the business that I want. Do have be is typically the way we here in North America function. And um, that actually is, does not necessarily promote the best internal self-leadership model because we're putting the doing at the front. And what I've noticed when I'm coaching my clients is that when we put the doing at the front, we get anxious, we get scared, we get frustrated, and we do all of those things that we say we don't want to do because we're functioning out of the part of our brain that isn't useful. And instead, we want to try functioning from a different source. We don't want to be functioning from uh, this primitive back brain that we all have. We want to be functioning from our cerebral, our, our prefrontal cortex. And so, if we focus on the do, we get anxious, and then our attitudes tend to suffer. How many of you can relate to this already? I'm seeing a few hands nodding, uh, uh, hands nodding, heads nodding and hands up. Okay, so maybe let's just come back to the do, have, be. Who wants to just share some, I will do this, I will have this, I will be something else? What, what does anyone want to share? Yep, go ahead. If I do the ground work and the dirty work, I will have more organization and order and I will be happier and more accomplished. Okay, beautiful. In yeah, in <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, no, and you know what? That is the way we typically think. And so we, we work on the do, we work on the do. You know, I, one day I decided I must really like cleaning my house because I do that a lot. <laughs> Anyway, anyone else want to share their do have be? Okay. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Have uh, create structure, uh, have accountability, and be more trusting. Do, sorry, say that again. I'm going to just say it out loud again so that it picks sorry. up with. Create structure. Create structure. And then I will have accountability. Have accountability. And as a result of that, I will be more trusting. Right, be more trusting, okay. And you know what, there are places where the do have be actually, it, it's not something that we want to hit the flush button on. We don't want to hit the flush button. But what I want to do with you today is I want to take us to sort of a place of play. I want us to take us to a place of experimenting with some thoughts. That this is like a laboratory that we can play with some thinking and so we're going to try something a little different. Let's, what would happen if we could move from do, have, be to be, do, have? What would happen if we could switch that up? So let me, let me fill, like, fill in the gaps. One of my words, and I, I come back to my, what are, I call are my core essential values. One of my core essential values is courage. So, B, I will be courageous. Do, I will do this talk today. Have, I will have opportunities that will come to me because of this. And so if I flip that around, I run the risk of becoming really anxious about being here today. And then I don't show up as courageous because I haven't put that first. It's about the source. And so that's, that's me. Now I'm going to switch that to you. On your tables, I've put each just one sheet because I'd like for there to be some discussion around this. 
you're at tables. This is a social, this is a social engagement. So what, is there a word there, either on the sheet or not on the sheet, that could be your B? Think about your value system. What do you need to be in order to lead? To use influence. It doesn't have to be perfect, because remember, this is just an experiment. So any ideas? What would you like to be? Courageous. I'd like to be courageous. Beautiful. Okay? Another, another intention. Trusting. Trusting. Like to be trusting. Well, there's a workshop right there, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yes, I do deliver a workshop about trust, which has been lots of fun. Yeah, so. <laughs> be. Balanced, okay, so out of balance flows something else. Okay, uh, up here? Freedom. Freedom, great core essential value, beautiful. Okay, anyone at the back? Fun. Fun, also a great core essential value. You know, when we, when we play with, when we, when we can focus on our leadership role and, and focus on freedom and focus on fun and focus on courage, we can show up differently. And so B do have, so if we're going to, let's choose one. Let's choose uh, in leadership, what do, what, which one do you guys want to choose? We've had, heard, heard a few. What, freedom? Yeah. Okay, so what of freedom, what do we need to, what do we need to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what of freedom, what do we need to do to lead? Trusting our employees does give, give us freedom. Okay, all right. What else could we do out of that, out of that B? Teach them to lead. Teach them to lead. Nice. Okay, that's another do. That's a teaching thing. Yeah, go ahead. Anyone at some more do's connected to, go ahead. Encourage their growth outside of the context of what you were doing. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. All right. So we've gone from do, have, be, to be, do, have. So what would happen if we did these things out of freedom flowed these choices, and out of these choices flowed what we will have? What would we have if we chose these courses of action. And actually, what we're doing when we're doing that as well is we're leading ourselves. We're not getting connected. We're like my core essential value of courage shows up every moment of every day when I'm practicing it. And I get to play with it. What does courage look like in this moment? Maybe it's one small thing. What does freedom look like? in the moment. Maybe it's one small thing. But if that can be your B, there is a lot of potential for the have. So, I'm hoping that I'm populating your worksheet. Have I missed anything so far? Just the emotional intelligence in the three, but I think that was covered. Okay. Great. Okay, so what what works? Um, I want to be sure that I... Okay, so emotional intelligence, it's called, there's, there's many names for leading yourself. It's called emotional intelligence. It can be aligning with your value system. It can be called personal mastery. It can be called self-actualization. It can be called ridding yourself of limiting beliefs. There's a lot of different ways of each, each guru that you read calls it something different. But really what it is is aligning with our B. Okay? So B do have. So there are B's that are useful and there are B's that are not useful. <laughs> so we've already talked about the B's that are not useful. Um, so on the list there that I've given you, I've shown you some things that are mostly useful. Who wants to share something that may be not useful as far as leadership? Arrogance. Arrogant. Okay. Not useful. So if you if 
if you notice this in yourself or them, and, and who can we can control? We can control ourselves. Um, then what you have to do is notice and choose. Which one are you going to be? Are you going to choose to be arrogant or are you going to choose freedom? Notice and choose. So, another one that might not be useful. Selfish. Okay, so selfish from the back there. Yeah, selfish. Go ahead. Tradition. Tradition. Yeah, rigid. Rigidity is is not necessarily the most not necessarily the most helpful because we have as many employees as you have. That's how many people that you're working with, and so rigidity creates. Um, lack of opportunity for them to be who they are and what they need to express as well. And so the happier you can, you know, make your employees, the more you can lead yourself, the more you can lead them and, and, and really raise their level of ability and the way that they can show up. Find out what their B is as well so that you can maximize on that. Absolutely. And listening skills, let's face it, in a world that is so loud, we have a hard time with listening. Right? So it takes some intentionality. So there's the B that are not useful, and then there are the B that are useful. And so what I'd love for you to do today is I'd like you to take some, I'd like you to just take a few minutes. I'm going to check my time here. Um, so there's a B that's useful. So I'm just going to invite you to take a few minutes to write down something that might be useful for you. So maybe you came here and you were wanting me to tell you, this is what you do. This is how you do it. I want you to do these five steps. But guess what? You are individuals. You have your own value systems. They're different than mine. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to empower you to do what works for you. Choose your own be, choose your own do, choose your own have. So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And hopefully as you do that, then you can get some traction. And we could spend a lot of time doing this. And I would invite you, when you get home tonight, or this afternoon, if you have some time, to actually spend some time thinking about this. Because this is about, this is about leadership in today's workplace. Command control, not useful leading from example and being who you are and, and leading from a place of abundance far more useful so uh is there anyone who'd like to share their be do have go ahead be respectful yeah do the work for others like mindful of others yeah have self-respect beautiful is it going to work perfectly every time <laughs> we're human we make mistakes right and can you give yourself permission to experiment with it? Beautiful. Can you give your employees some permission to experiment with it too? Awesome. Okay. Anyone else? Be Thanks for sharing, by the way. I, I love this. I love this dialogue. It's it's great because, you know, while I'm a, well, you know, whatever. You guys have your, your credentials too, right? So, anyone else? We do have. Yes, go ahead. I guess it's kind of getting back to what I was thinking before, but I guess uh, to be more, um, or to be less vague, I guess, under not useful attention. Okay. Less vague in, in what the objectives were. Okay. So, present a clearer future picture mm. and have more trust. Okay. Wonderful. And, and you feel like that's something that you can do? Does it, feel like there's a, does it feel like there's an empowerment rather than just like an expectation? Possibly? Yeah, I mean, something that I've been working on for a while. Okay, all right. Very good, okay. 
Well, there are some things that I still want to cover, and we're, uh, we're just about to the end of our time. Um, there, there is something that gets in the way, and I want to cover that for sure, too. And that is the idea of scarcity. It's the feeling of, I'm never something enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not credentialed enough. I'm not pretty enough. I don't have the right weight. I don't have the right personality. These are the things that actually are, that's the conversation we have in our head. That is not useful. It gets in the way of our B. And if it gets in the way of our B, we can't have that source really work and flow out of there. So, so there, are, there are things we tell ourselves. It's, it's, it's called scarcity. It's called shame. It's called a lot of things. It's a limiting belief. And so if you can identify when you're thinking and feeling, I'm not something enough, then you can uh, respond perhaps a little differently out of self-compassion. Hmm, you know what? Maybe it doesn't matter that I don't have these credentials behind my name. Maybe it doesn't. And, and step into your B. There are three things that we do. These are your, this, if you take, if you take anything away from today other than the B do have, I would suggest that this is really important stuff. There are three ways that we typically respond when we're not being authentic. When we're not being true to ourselves. And that is that we move away, becoming small, and hiding. We move toward, that's people pleasing, and move against, and that is like your fight. Okay? So if you can notice when you move away, I, I have a situation in my life, absolutely, where I have moved away, <laughs> and it's because I'm believing something about that situation. I've used move toward, and I've used move against. If you, can, if you can notice when you're using these and you're not being authentic, you will be able to change your story. You'll be able to change your story. And that's what we all want. We all want to live the story that we really want to live, our, our true, authentic self. And, and that's where true leadership really comes from. That's where influence flows out of. So move away, move toward, and move against. Those are, those are the triggers that let us know that we're not being authentic. So we can notice and we can choose. We can choose something different. So as a coach, this is what I do. I help people like you learn how to change the way that they manage their internal conversation to show up differently, to get leadership skills so that they can manage their staff differently. And so if there is something that I've said that you'd like to get a little bit more information on, a little bit more traction on, so that you can apply it more personally to your life, then please don't hesitate to call me. Uh, I have business cards and some um, wrap cards at the back. And one of the things that I've done as well is, um, I'm a, as a certified Daring Way facilitator, I offer workshops and um, so workshops, personal coaching, um, speaking events like today. But uh, I have a, a sheet that is about, it's called a leadership manifesto. And so I, I, I created um, one for each of, of you so that it can be, and it's, it's you can use it, you can put it wherever you want, but there are some great thoughts for you to take away um, for this. And so um, I'm just having a look. I'm hoping that I populated your, uh, your sheets with everything that you've needed. And so, you know, if you would like to learn some coaching skills and see how coaching can influence your business practice. I've seen coaching influence every, everything from real estate to dentistry. Uh, it's a way of listening. It's a way of asking questions and, and helping others find their be. And so um, 
that's what I brought for you today. If you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to, to contact me. I'd love to work with leaders like yourself. And um, so thank you very much for your time and attention. Oh yes, thank you very much for the reminder. Um, I have a mailing list as well. Um, so if, if you would like to be on my mailing list, uh, I don't send out lots of emails weekly, monthly. When something comes up, that's when I send something out. And so I'm not going to pester you. If you'd like to sign up for that as well, there's a leadership manifesto as well. Um, I have a few things that uh, I could pass on to you. If you sign up for, on my, for my mailing list, I will also I'll, I'll, uh, do a draw tonight and one of you will be the lucky recipient of one of my favorite books called by Dr. Brene Brown called Daring Greatly. And so to, do, to step into your B is truly, truly to dare greatly. So um, I think that's probably my time. Do we, do we have any time for questions? I have four more minutes. Okay, so perfect. Do we have any time for questions? We have, we have four more minutes, so we have time for questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Super interested in the Daring Way. I am such a great fan. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Do you do your, like, is it a Monday workshop? How do you do, like, is it a private workshop or something? Right. So one of the things I've just recently done is I started a Red Deer Brene Brown, doc, like Dr. Brene Brown meetup. So um, how many of you are familiar with meetups? Okay, so um, if you want to go on the meetup, there's, there's a website called Meetups. There's, um, meetups are for all different kinds of interests. And uh, so there are one-day workshops, there's three-day workshops. I'm hoping to access the Canada Alberta Job Grant with three-day workshops so that people like you can implement this emotional intelligence stuff into your business place. Uh, and so that you know, if, you, if you sign up with the meetup, then you'll have all of the most current information. Right now, I don't have a meetup scheduled. What I do have scheduled, however, um, there I have a, a coach skills workshop that's going to be held in Edmonton. So if you're interested, it's at the uh, end of November. And um, so if you're interested at all in learning coaching skills and how they apply to your context, um, also contact me. I partner with a Vancouver-based firm called Essential Impact, and they're the one that's actually, that hosts that event, but I partner with them. So. Any other questions? Okay, beautiful. Well, I hope um, if, if, if you can do anything, I just encourage you to play around with this and to be kind to yourself and, and try something new and become intentional over, over a period of time. Create a reminder for yourself about what you want your be to be that day. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. You're, you've been a great audience.